Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You know, I so miss being physically with you guys. It's just, I still find it very weird just speaking into a mic and just looking into a screen. But alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, one should always be grateful for the opportunity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us that at least we can connect and at least we can go over uh, uh, certain portions of the Quran together. Alhamdulillah for that. So, um, We've reached day 18, right? 18th of Ramadan. And for some of you, the 19th of Ramadan, right? And uh, we are doing Surah Nisa. And uh, we are going to, inshallah, start from ayah number 59, right? Okay, I'm not wrong. Yeah, okay. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen. As-salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Anbiya wal Mursaleen. سيدنا وحبيبنا والشفيعنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين رب يسر ولا تعسر يا كريم وافتح بالحق إنك الفتاح العليم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري واحل الأقطة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب العالمين يا غفور الرحيم يا رحم الرحيم يا ذا الجلال والإكرام فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so Surah Nisa, Ayah number 59 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says يا أيها الذين آمنوا أطيعوا الله وأطيعوا الرسول وأولي الأمر وأولي الأمر منكم فإن تنازعتم في شيء فردوه إلى الله والرسول إن كنتم مؤمنين تؤمنون كنتم تؤمنون كنتم تؤمنون بالله واليوم الآخر ذلك خير وأحسن تأويلا I don't know if any of you have actually been counting right how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said أطيوا الله وأطيوا الرسول O you who believe Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Obey the messenger and now over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also saying, and also obey ulil amr, right? Okay. Then if you quarrel about something, revert it back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. If there is any ikhtilaf, if there is any issue, if there is any tanaza, right? So take it back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And you would do that if you believe in Allah and the last day. And that is good and the best at the, at the end. That is the best course of action to take for you. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have talked about obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And like I said, I, don't, I haven't kept count of how many times Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that. Over here, when Allah is talking about these ulil amr, who are these people? Ulil Amr would be those people who are, um, who have got some kind of authority over you, right? Some kind of authority over you. Now, obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and obedience to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is unconditional, right? It's unconditional. If you are a believer, if you're saying, I'm ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, then atiullah and atiur rasul is a given. But obedience to or listening to, or uh, um, yeah, obedience to ulil amr, those who are on top of you, to so to speak, those who are in the, uh, those who have the authority to give you hukum, right? Uh, those who have the authority to have some uh, leverage over you, right? Now, they could be political leaders, they could be, I don't know, uh, something to do with governance, yeah? they could, could be legal authority, it could be, um, uh, it's a very wide spectrum. It could be uh, your teachers or your principals in school. It could be the university administration. Anyone who has authority over you in any capacity. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, again, a social, uh, a just and a smooth social structure runs when there are people who are in authority. They've been given authority for hopefully for reasons of uh, uh, legitimate re reasons that they are capable of handling that authority, etc. Then those who are under them, 
should listen to them, right? Now, this ulil amr uh, uh, obedience is contingent on their obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay? That is one thing. So, if you remember, every time we have done the ayat where it says, Babil wali deni ehtana, right? For example, your walidain have authority over you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed them as your walidain. They are your parents and you are their children, right? But your, their obedience is only subject to if they are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Otherwise, your relationship with them is of ihsan. So that's just a very glaring example. So for example, if you are in school or you are in university and there are, uh, there, there, you know, your teachers or the administration or the principal, right? They have an issue with you say, what can I say? A fasting. For example, say they say that you cannot fast. Now that's going to be very problematic, right? You are going to be under their authority in other areas of the school, like you know, what are the timings and how what your what the rules and regulations of the school are, you're going to follow all of that. But if there is anything that falls under directly uh, uh, problematic in terms of your uh, faith, then that is something that you have to think about. That is something that you will not be following, the obeying an authority like that. And there are ways to go about it. I will give you a very simple example uh, uh, from where my children go to, have been going to school. Right? And a lot of times when you are polite and you kind of put in a request nicely, then nobody is, just wants to have a loggerhead until and unless they are just out to... Uh, just totally Islamophobic or something, right? So uh, there's a milad every year in, in their school, in the children's school, right? Um, right. So that is something which we don't do at home. I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just giving you a very glaring example. And Alhamdulillah, there are many like-minded people who were not very comfortable that their children should be involved in a milad uh, uh, day or whatever, practice, etc. So simply go talk to the authorities write a nice letter that please excuse my child. So there have been certain issues as well with certain children also that what is it, aren't you a Muslim? So you're not going to... So all you need to do is talk very nicely and sweetly, right? Uh, that, listen, if your canteen is open in Ramadan, I'm not saying anything to you that that is your, th that is your deal, that that is out of my uh, uh, area of influence and I'm not going to impose my authority over you in terms of why is the canteen open in Ramadan? Astaghfirullah haram. Right, right. So this is something that our family doesn't prescribe to. We do not celebrate the birthday of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam this way. I don't want my child doing that. End of story. So if, for example, uh, you're a girl and you're wearing a hijab and the authority has a problem with that, you reason with them and see what happens. Yeah. If you are a young man and you have a beard and in school and uh, college they tell you, you tell them this is for religious reasons. So you understand like how do you obey the ulil uh, amr within the capacity of, you know, the, the, this is not unconditional. This is not unconditional. But what scholars have told us is, and which is very reasonable, very rational, if there is someone who has some authority over you in this world and you have voluntarily placed yourself under their authority, then you must obey Voluntarily, you've done that. You know? For example, if you're living in a predominantly non-believing country, although to be very honest, uh, uh, all countries are predominantly not 100% Islamic, really, to be honest. Yeah? So, but you are living in a country, Alhamdulillah, by choice, that you can't say that I'm not going to pay taxes or I'm not going to follow the uh, uh, speed limit or I'm not going to follow certain civic rules or whatever. You can't say that because you have placed yourself under that authority yourself. Right? So in, in many situations, it's like that. And when it comes to personal practice, we know that there are many places in the world today where personal practice of Muslims is being clamped, clamped down upon. And there are many instances where it's not that simple for the people who are living over there, the believers who are living over there to just get up and leave. So what do they do in a situation like that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them uh, tremendously and we should support them in any way that we can. We can support them in any way that we can. Okay. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Alam tara 
again are you not amazed have you not seen those who claim that they have believed in what you are what was revealed to you or prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what was revealed before you they want to take their disputes to the taghut while they were ordered to reject it shaitan wants to mis- mislead them to a remote and wrong way so they began with the right intention but when there is any kind of judgment issue when they want judgment on something they take that to somebody else other than you and what does shaitan want and allah is saying very clearly they take it to taghut taghut what people of shaitan shaitan right so shaitan wants to mislead them to a remote you know he wants to uh, take you astray wide going astray far from the path nowhere near right let's read a few verses and let's talk about it when it is said to them come to what allah subhanahu wa taala has revealed unto the messenger you will see the hypocrites turning away from you in aversion but how apologetic they are when they suffer a calamity because the act because of the acts of their own hands and they come to you swearing by allah subhanahu wa taala we meant nothing but to promote good and to bring about harmony those are the ones allah knows what is in their hearts so ignore them o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and give them good counsel and speak to them about themselves in appealing words right so what the hypocrites used to do was that if there was a decision which they felt that it's going to be favorable if they go to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then they would go to him and if they felt that there was a decision which is going to be perhaps something that won't go down well with them then they would seek some other system of uh, uh, judgment right and uh, this is particularly said about kaab bin ashraf who was a jew right uh, he was a, he was a rabbi right so they would a lot of times go to him rather than coming to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that is a specific a specific uh, context but do you and i do the same thing as well right do believers do the same thing as well allah subhanahu wa taala is calling this the quality of a hypocrite right a lot of times we see that we are very happy to go fatwa shopping huh? if so and so is saying something which is according and please don't get me wrong fatwa of scholars of deen who are adhering to the quran and sunnah are a very valid judgment call a very valid judgment call but for me to say that there is a certain area right where certain scholar is saying that no actually hijab doesn't really mean this ha huh? that which goes 100% against whatever is in the uh, uh, book of allah subhanahu wa taala and majority uh, uh, ijma and uh, consensus of majority mainstream islam hmm? and then you take that fatwa that is very problematic that is very very problematic right so this whenever you feel that islamic law would further your interest that you turn to it but if you feel no there's a bit of a problem over here this might go against and whether it, and this dispute could be anything whether it's a personal issue whether it's a legal issue right this is a wrong thing to do this is a hypocritical thing to do that is what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying over here we did not send any messenger wama arsalna mir rasul illa li yuqa bi idnillah we did not send any messenger except what that they should be obeyed the purpose of a messenger all the messengers that allah subhanahu wa taala sent each and every one of them hmm, was not to be now to billah a postman it was a lot more than that so allah is reiterating that over the here had they after being after having wronged themselves come to you o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and sought forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa taala and had the messenger prayed for their forgiveness they would have certainly found allah subhanahu wa taala tawwab ar rahim right so even if they made a mistake for those people who kind of are yoying between okay should we follow the sunnah or should we not follow the sunnah should we should we go to the rasul or should we not go to the rasul right admit your problem admit your weakness admit your mistake seek forgiveness and in those days when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam was alive he would pray for your forgiveness and that's that and allah subhanahu wa taala tawwab ar rahim right so now this ayah over here allah subhanahu wa taala is taking an oath right allah subhanahu wa taala is saying fala wa rabbik this wow over here is wow qasmiya oops where is it this is not atas this is wow qasmiya this is taking allah is taking oath that 
pala <clears throat> never by your rod and I, uh, by your lord and i swear by myself never shall they become believers la yu'minuna hatta yuhakkimuka fi ma shajara bainahum thumma la yajidu fi anfusihim haraja haraja mimma qadayt wa yusallimu taslima yani they will never ever ever be believers this is a very strong strict statement very strong this is the strongest statement about ata'at of rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam all of it put together in the quran this is the most strong statement over here surah nisa ayah number 65 never shall they become believers yani allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that you can endanger your iman if your ata'at of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is dodgy your iman is in danger right unless they make you o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the judge in the disputes that arise between them then find no discomfort in their hearts against what you have decided and surrender to it in total submission quran is saying this in clear words by the way this is not ambiguous at all legislative judiciary moral authority of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is established in the quran one worse after the other so if there is anybody who saying that let's just stick with the quran okay alhamdulillah stick with the quran quran is telling you that this is the legislative authority of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam you want to stick with the quran stick with the quran right quran is telling you that this is rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam position this is rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh, authority yeah and what scholars say is that allah subhanahu wa taala has tied the validity of our iman with the ataat of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the obedience of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so this is something very serious that we need to think about right where am i taking my disputes where am i taking my skepticism where am i taking my agnosticism right if i have any doubt in any ayat of the quran right whether it's a moral issue whether it is a legal issue whether it's a financial issue whatever issue there is where am i going with it am i going to the orientalist professor sitting in harvard hmm? am i going to that uh, person who is uh, uh, you know just a few days ago i think i had mentioned that if you're a muslim woman and you're talking about the misogyny of islam and the patriarchal system of islam and blah, 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 you're going to be so celebrated yeah so are we going to that celebrated author who's sitting somewhere you know she's been given a a, a lifetime achievement award or whatever and book the am i going to her to get a clarity on the position of say a, a relationship between a husband and wife in islam or getting clarity about riba where am i taking my issue where am i where am i going who am i making a hakim over me whose authority am i accepting then allah subhanahu wa taala said if we had prescribed for them that they should kill themselves or that they should migrate from their homeland they would not have done it except a few of them if they had done what they were advised to do it would have been better for them and more effective in making them firm remember we talked about it when we were uh, 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 in surah al baqara that there was one way that uh, musa alaihi salam told his qaum uh, told his people to make tauba was to kill themselves right so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying if we had given them any order right or to do hijra like for example before uh, uh, at the time of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam before fath makka it was formed on every muslim to migrate to medina there there was not a choice everybody had to migrate right and yet there were some who actually didn't right who actually didn't although nifaq actually started in medina but there were still some people for those who didn't because of uh, absolute problem uh, uh, issue of oppression or they physically couldn't that is a different matter and will come later but those out of choice who didn't right there were some people who out of choice did so allah is saying if they were they were asked to do something they still wouldn't do it right so this what is this claim for iman then in that case had they done that had they listened to what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying we would certainly have given them a great reward and we would certainly have led them to a straight path right so what does it show us obedience of allah subhanahu wa taala 
again yesterday we were talking about it that for some reason we feel obedience is such a bad word now obedience is an oppressive word no it isn't no it isn't if you look at how emancipated you will be and what where allah subhanahu wa taala is going to take you try to bow down first na we don't even want to try it right we don't want to try it and we feel this is so oppressive i don't want any authority over me try the authority of allah subhanahu wa taala once you start bowing down to allah there are going to be a million authorities that you will not need to bow down to seriously a million right people ideas stuff that you won't bother about anymore because you have made yourself honey like ibrahim alay salam just submitting to allah subhanahu wa taala and only then do you get sirat al mustaqim somebody had said something very profound that there are so many injunctions like blueprint of sharia as in surah al baqarah for example right in the in the beginning of the quran right surah nisa is also right in the beginning of the quran really particularly surah al baqarah blueprint of the sharia so somebody said that allah subhanahu wa taala has kept that there's a reason that the madani surahs are over there with all of the rules and regulations etc perhaps one reason is that allah subhanahu wa taala wants to see who is going to bow down to my commandments and for them the entire quran then opens up then their heart completely stretches up right in sharah we say na rabbi shrah li sadri oh allah open my chest when the chest gets open when the heart gets open towards allah subhanahu wa taala that is sirat al mustaqim right that is what it is that is when hidayah begins right those who obey allah subhanahu wa taala and the messenger are those whom allah subhanahu wa taala has blessed remember we did this when we were talking about sirat al mustaqim sirat al ku an amta alayhim hu wa dan amta alayhim nabiyyin wa siddiqin wa shuhada wa salihin this is that ayah right so whoever obeys allah and the messenger are with those they have the ma'iyah they have the uh, uh, the companionship they are with those people who are the prophets and the siddiqin and the shuhada and the righteous wa wa salihin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa and what an amazing companionship i mean this is like the elitist of the elite club that you can vie for that you can yearn for truly you know in this dunya we want to give an arm and a leg or we stand you know on our heads to get our children admission into quote and quote that elite school right or ourselves into that elite club hmm? we would do anything we would really do anything it's quite sad actually sometimes when you can kind of think about at what lengths we go to get into certain places yeah why do we do that because it gives you some social standing in a lot of ways yeah it gives you some certain sort of social standing we do that for that reason hmm? so you want to go to i'm not going to name club but you know what i'm talking about you want to go into some some place so that you can just just casually say so i had brunch at falana falana with so and so talk about so and so nabiyin siddiqin shuhada salihin and jannatul fit obviously this is jannatul fit those those yeah jannatul fit those admissions are open and the criteria is not that crazy that the criteria we see about these dunyavi schools and clubs visas are being given left right and center this is the time to cash in hmm? this is the time to cash in and remember i told you that there was this person who came to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he said that you know after we die you're going to be in such a high uh, place and I, i don't know i'm so sad that i won't be able to see you so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had smiled and said that you will be with those whom you love so you see love is that fuel that will take us to the obedience of allah subhanahu wa taala and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no way on this planet that anybody can force anybody to follow the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala or to be obedient to the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam the only fuel the only motivational factor the only thing that pushes you forward is love and that all inspiring fear right but more, when you are in love we say na love makes the world go round it truly does it actually truly does it is the love 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept in the hearts of mothers, those of us who are mothers over here, that we did not take those little whiny brats, right, when they were little, and just wrung their necks and throw them in the dustbin. What kept us from doing that? That love that Allah has kept inside. That was a motivational factor. Nothing else. Right? So imagine being in this exalted company. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from among those. That is the grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ذَلِكَ الْفَضْلُ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ عَلِيمًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient as being the one who knows, right? Who knows people's hearts. Who knows people's intentions. Who knows people's uh, motivational factors. So if it, if, if it is a munafiq, Allah knows what's in the heart and he's just paying lip service. Now from 71 to 74, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to talk about some additional commandments of qital fi sabilillah, of jihad. Oh, you who believe, be on your guard and march in groups or march all together, like different types of military strategies. Among you, there is one who invariably falls back. Again, the munafiq. Then if some calamity befalls you, he would say, Allah has shown his favor to me. I was not present with him. In those days also, <clears throat> that used to happen, right? And if you look at this with the wider explanation of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, so whenever a calamity befalls a believer, right? or a group of believers who are, say, practicing the sunnah, and there is an issue, right? So uh, uh, there is an issue that happens. There's some kind of prosecution, whether it is social ostracization or whatever. And they say, thank God we were not with them, huh? Such extremists, right? We're not part of them. Thank God we were not with them. And if some bounty comes to you from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will certainly say, as if there was no friendship between you and him, Oh, would that I have been with them, then I would have secured a handsome gain. Now, this is a very typical monarchic mentality that they don't want loss sharing. They only want profit sharing. Just ready for profit sharing. Oh, we, we, you know, come on, guys. After all, you know, we are from the same club or whatever, right? So those who sell the worldly life for the hereafter, like saying, yashrun al dunya bil Those who sell the worldly life rather than the other way around, they, they're okay. This dunya goes, goes. Should fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Should make this effort in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the face of aggression. Whoever fights aggression in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then gets killed or prevails, we shall give a great reward to him. So basically what Allah is saying over here is, that for a person who is struggling aggression and oppression in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is really no defeat. Either you die, then you are shaheed, alhamdulillah, or you prevail, alhamdulillah. There's really no defeat as such. There's really no defeat and we shall give a great reward to him. So what do we need to do? What Allah is saying is, this life for that life. Make that trade. That is the best trade possible, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying over here. What has happened to you that you do not fight in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And for the oppressed among men, women, and children, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, what reason is that, that you don't fight aggression and oppression in the way of Allah? And also for those who are weak, fighting on behalf of those who are weak, and oppressed. And then this dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written over here is the cry of the oppressed. Rabbana akhrijna min hadhihi al-qariya al-zalimi ahluha waj'allana min ladunka wal because out from this town whose people are cruel and make for us a supporter from your own and make for us a helper from your own. So whether we look at it from the special reference to context at the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, when there were many true believers who were left in Makkah, and they, for some of them, were slaves. Some of them had such situation that they actually couldn't leave, and but they would be crying out that they are in a town of oppressors where there's zulm being done of them, done on them. Or we look at it from our point of view that there are so many people around the world who are oppressed and who are in the hand of aggressors, right? Whether it is Syria, whether it is Iraq, whether it is portions of Afghanistan, whether it is Burma, whether it is, uh, I don't know what other places, I'm forgetting some places, I'm sure, right? Whether it was Bosnia in that time, right? Or 
what is what is going on over here don't we even say don't we even make dua for them right what is the matter with you that you don't stand up for those who are oppressed whether it is kashmir right you don't stand up for those who are oppressed what is the matter with you what kind of ninnies are you basically right what happened in europe with the nazis yeah they made nato after that that such oppression and such uh, uh, aggression should never happen on this soil again right what are we doing what are we doing these are words of the quran guys these are words of the quran the least you and i can do the least and we should be doing is make a lot of dua make a lot of dua these people are truly oppressed these people have no way to go they are being prosecuted big time only because of their faith and we are sitting over here having our soul suhoor and aftar and doing our tarawees and our uh, ibada not even thinking about them right then allah subhanahu wa taala says in ayah number 76 the disbelievers the, sorry the believers fight in the way of allah and the disbelievers fight in the way of taghut alladhina amanu yuqatiluna fi sabilillah والذين كفروا يقاتلون في سبيل الطاغوت right so fight the friends of shaitan فقاتلوا اولياء الشيطان ان كيد الشيطان كان ضعيفا so this is something which was relevant in those days and this is something which is relevant today and we are not talking about armed conflict like crazy suicide stuff and all that that's not what we are talking about when allah is has put these verses in the quran for all times to come so it is relatable and this is for all believers including you and me how can you and me fight in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala today right how can we do that when we are not even willing to implement the commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala on our own selves our fight our fight against oppression can be in many ways have sabr and stick to your guns in terms of your practice of islam number 1 write about it right make videos about it raise your voice about the oppression and aggression all of that can be done so the if the fight of the taghut is turning to media for example you turn to media and answer the aggression right and answering the aggression doesn't mean with more aggression answering the aggression can also be with more positivity right so allah subhanahu wa taala then says Have you not seen those to whom it was said, "Hold your hands from fighting and be steadfast in salah and pay zakat"? So, in the Makki period, what the believers were told was that you need to consolidate and strengthen your iman with salah, right, and with spending in the way of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And you are not even, no matter how much the aggression gets or the oppression gets, you are not going to fight back. You're not going to fight back. That was the message in. Uh, that was a commandment in. Um, makka right but after that what happened was however when fighting is enjoined upon them then surprisingly a group from them starts fearing people as one would fear allah subhanahu wa taala or fearing even more right uh idha fariqu minhum yakhshawna an-nasa ka khashyatillah aw ashadd khashya yani you fear people more than you even fear allah subhanahu wa taala and that is so absolutely true today hi 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 lok kya kahenge i can't do this what are people going to say lok kya kahenge what is janu going to say if i start covering myself right what is my best friend going to say how am i going to go and pick up my children from school nobody is going to stand next to me for example right or various other like you fear people more than you fear allah subhanahu wa taala right i can't post that i can't force post that that is so homophobic you fear people more than you fear allah subhanahu wa taala they say our lord why have you enjoyed fighting upon us hmm? would you have not spared us a little more time say o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the enjoyment of the world is but a little qul mata'u dunya qalil right and it is the hereafter wal akhiratu khairun liman liman ittaqa wa la tuzlamuna fatila and the akhirah is much better for the one who has taqwa allah subhanahu wa taala has talked about mata aur dunya many times and we've discussed it several times or here allah is saying that even if you get this dunya even if you save your skins so to speak even if you go in for the popularity contest 
right a lot of times we don't want to lose our popularity or our social position that's why we don't say anything about what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying and what rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying and we just kind of you know uh, go with the flow right or we just even if we don't go with the flow we don't say anything about anything right absolutely we don't want to be uh, on the wrong side of what the popular tide is these days so to speak wallah is saying یونیورسٹی ان وٹ ایور آئی ڈو position in some fancy uh, firm wherever you may be death will overtake you reality check even though you are in fortified castles buruj mushayyada you know the parables allah uses in the quran are like wow amazing buruj is like uh, from burj which means something which is uh, uh, which you can see from far off some a position uh, something which is uh, again i'm tongue twisted uh, tongue tied burj is something which is visible from far off right in in the arabic language barija is a sailboat because the sail you can see which is visible which is um okay something which is visible visible like burj khalifa even if you are in a high social status for example fortified castles can Uh, can be like somewhere where you think nothing can touch me you've got your own battalion of armed guards for example your own personal security you're living in your own gated community somewhere hmm? wherever you are wherever you are death will find you right and what we have, we, we feel what we have done in this dunya is that the more dunya you have fortified right you are entrenched in the more oblivious or uh, um, heed, heedless you become of the akhirah and of death. Most of the time, not all of the time, most of the time. The one who is conscious of death, the one who is conscious of akhirah may have a lot of dunya, right? May have a lot of dunya, but that dunya is not entrenched in his heart and the dunya is not entrenched around him in a way that he feels that, you know, this is this is all there is what the word that i was trying to look for for burj was prominent something which is prominent so in whatever prominent position you are in it doesn't mean that death will overlook you somehow there's not going to be any discrimination about somebody you know now we give you more respite or whatever no that is not going to happen um so allah subhanahu wa taala says if some good comes to them they say this is from allah subhanahu wa taala but if some evil visits them they say this is from you say o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam all is from allah subhanahu wa taala so what is wrong with these people they do not seem to understand anything hmm? everything good or bad remember ayat al kursi everything is from allah subhanahu wa taala nothing is beyond allah subhanahu wa taala's control important for us to understand so what are we saving ourselves from right why are we not standing up in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala what are we afraid of whatever good comes to you it is from allah and whatever evil comes to visit you it comes from your own selves yani whatever evil whatever calamity certain calamities are because of your own amal right we have sent to you a messenger for the people allah subhanahu wa taala is enough to be a witness whoever obeys allah uh, the messenger obeys allah now over here allah is saying wa yuti ar rasul faqad ata allah 
this hasn't come before it was always atiullah wa ati rasul right now there is another stress the litmus test of obedience to allah subhanahu wa taala is obedience to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and whoever turns away then we did not send you to stand guard over them fama arsalnaka alaihim hafiza that was not the job of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam they say obedience <clears throat> but when they go away from you a group of them conspires at night contrary for, uh, to what they say allah subhanahu wa taala records what they conspire so ignore them and put your trust in allah subhanahu wa taala allah subhanahu wa taala is enough uh, allah is enough to trust in right so what is allah subhanahu wa taala again this is talking about the munafiqin right this is talking about the munafiqin we've talked about this in surah al baqarah as well that then when they are uh, with their own kind of you know uh, circle or uh, or on their own <clears throat> they are going to pledge allegiance to you and then at night they are going to have all kinds of conspiracies against you do they not then ponder about the quran had it been from someone other than allah subhanahu wa taala they would have found it in it a great deal of discrepancy don't they do tabat tadabbur on the quran if there was any co author of the quran for example then you would have found a lot of conflict a lot of conflict and ikhtilaf in terms of the commandments in terms of the language in terms of everything right none of that you find in the quran it is so consistent in its message it is so consistent in its approach it is so consistent in the language that it that it uses why because it is from allah subhanahu wa taala when news concerning peace or fear comes to them they go about spreading it now over here allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about another disease of the munafiqoon which was like sensationalism rumors gossip yeah had they referred it to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and to those having authority among them the truth of the matter uh, would have come to the knowledge of those of them who are able to investigate but for allah subhanahu wa taala's grace upon you and mercy you would have followed the shaitan save a few if allah's grace and mercy was not on you right so allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about this that the munafiqoon used to do that anything right and you just go about spreading it all over the place and that is a disease that we have today as well and let's note that allah is talking about the munafiqeen in this ayat we have this problem of just spreading stuff without knowing anything about it and these days what happens news goes viral we have another shaitan <laughs> has taken us to another medium and again the medium is not shaitani the medium can be used to spread good to sp- uh, spread uh, productive stuff to sp- spread beneficial stuff but unfortunately and even when it comes to islamic stuff why 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 do we just send a message and say say uh yeah forward it as received but it don't forward as received don't do that find out whether this is true or not don't say forward it as received right and perhaps we do it out of the goodness of our heart that i want other people to know right but because there is so much out there these days so much out there how do you know what is true what is not true hmm? how do you know what is true and what is not to so be very careful that doesn't mean that you shouldn't share anything but be careful be discerning on what you of what you say uh, or what you're sharing the sallallahu sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that it is enough for a person to be a liar that they say whatever the, whatever it is that they are, they have heard yani without having any kind of tasdeeq without having any kind of confirmation about it don't do that don't do that do a little bit of background check right at least find out is it actually a verse of the quran or somebody has just sent allah subhanahu wa taala sometimes we do that as well and particularly we have this great problem about spreading gossip as well right spread this can include spreading gossips any kind of sensationalist stuff any rumor right goes viral absolutely viral and the repercussions of that can be very very serious so investigate be very careful about what you are sharing sometimes mothers group are also this chatter goes berserk right be very careful 
so fight in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala you are not responsible for but for yourself and persuade the believers to fight in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala it is likely that allah will prevent the mischief of those who disbelieve allah subhanahu wa taala is the strongest in power and mightiest in punishing whoever makes a good recommendation there shall be for him this is talking about shafa yashfa al shafa'at al hasana whoever makes a good recommendation there shall be for him a share from it in the hereafter and whoever makes a bad recommendation there shall be for him a share from it allah subhanahu wa taala is powerful over everything so so in shafa in terms of recommendations in this dunya so if you know that somebody is capable somebody has got the credentials right and you are in a position where you can perhaps give in a good word for maybe a job or an admission somewhere etc so do that that is good shafa that's not punchy system that somebody is not eligible and you know somebody is just nepotism this is not talking about nepotism this is talking about good shafa somebody who is capable and perhaps need needs a little bit of recommendation give that recommendation right we have recommendations from you know uh, for, from teachers as well for students right but be very careful about giving recommendations that they will they must be based on truth they must be based on justice yeah we will come to that later inshallah right so giving good recommendations is not a, not a uh, bad idea but bad recommendation would be that purchase system that nepotism that just you know maybe a uh, bribe you know you bribe somebody and you know do this for me that is also a bad recommendation when you are greeted with a salutation greet with one better than it or return the same surely allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who takes account of everything this is our deen guys allah subhanahu wa taala is saying something so beautiful and something so simple it's not even something complicated at all when you meet people greet them with something which is better right so you meet your friend she says hi you say assalamu alaikum right somebody says assalamu alaikum you say wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh our salutation of our prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the salutation of our deen is giving dua to somebody right dua of peace dua of blessing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said five are the rights of a muslim over his brother responding to salutation so if somebody says assalamu alaikum don't say like oh no that does say wa alaikum assalam uh responding a uh, saying yarhamakullah when anybody sneezes so somebody says sneezes and says alhamdulillah you say yarhamakullah may the rahma of allah be upon you right and uh says alhamdulillah and when, when anybody sneezes and says alhamdulillah you reply with yarhamakullah visiting the sick and following the funeral bier right rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam also said the best people to allah are those who are first to greet with peace sometimes uh older people right uh have this chip on the shoulder she didn't say sal- you see how batmis these children have become they don't say salam they don't greet you first are bhai you say assalam alaikum na that will be sending that will be tarbiya also right so you come home and uh, uh, your, your your staff or your maid or whatever they, they, sal- you are not going to come and say assalam alaikum waiting for her to say salam and if she does it you are going to be like how batmis how rude salam nahi karte kya yes how but the means how rude aapne salam kiya right salam it's as simple as that and we have come to that state of being sorry muslim that we are embarrassed to say assalamu alaikum in public to our friends in school or college we we are embarrassed of this beautiful greeting and even when we do say salam we say assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum doesn't mean anything assalamu alaikum that is the beautiful greeting and if you can add wa rahmatullahi assalamu alaikum may peace be upon you wa and rahmatullahi the rahma the mercy of allah upon you wa barakatu and his baraka can you imagine what a wonderful dua you are giving and then when you reply wa alaikum assalam same to you same to you so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has also told us that somebody who initiates the salam gets 30 rewards and one who replies gets 10 right rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had also said one of the best aspects of our deen is, is that you say salam to those who you know and those who you don't know right 
those who you know who you don't know i remember once some some years ago i was in, in some other country and in this particular place there was this lady who was an arab lady right and kind of and alhamdulillah we recognized each other because of our the way we were dressed and she said assalamu alaikum i can't even tell you i was so overwhelmed we just hugged each other yeah and my children are very wary of that they're like oh my god woman what is the matter with you i'm not saying that you go ahead and particularly these days in these covid times you don't go ahead hugging people like a mad person the whole, the idea is that this is such a simple making this is such a simple brownie point just imagine that that salam might tilt the your scale on the day of judgment just just think of it that way make salam popular again inshallah inshallah allahu la ilaha illahu allah subhanahu wa taala there is no god but who but he he shall certainly gather you towards the day of resurrection there is no doubt in that la raiba fi who is more truthful in his word than allah wa man astaqu min allah hadithan nobody ya allah nobody you are the most truthful sadaq allah allah subhanahu wa taala is the most truthful so what is the matter with you that you have become two groups about the hypocrites while allah subhanahu wa taala has reverted them because of what they did do you want to guide the one whom allah subhanahu wa taala has let go astray the one who allah lets go astray you shall never find a way for him now over here in 88 uh, allah subhanahu wa taala is saying <clears throat> some people from makka came to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and pretended to have embraced islam but after a while they turned apostates and left for makka on the pretext of taking a business trip so some muslims said that they are still muslims while others said that they had returned you know they've turned back so this verse has disclosed that they never embraced islam in, in reality they were hypocrites who came to deceive muslims right after their departure they abandoned even their claim of being muslims so in verse 89 now allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks of their real designs and orders the muslims to kill them wherever they are found right this is about a specific group of people they wish that they should be disbelieved as they have disbelieved and thus you become all alike now this bit before we go on to the next is something important right uh what do law takfuruna kama kafaru fatakununa sawa right that everybody becomes alike global village let's all have a happy meal hmm? there should be absolutely no difference between you know apparently everybody looks alike everybody eats the same food hmm? and junk food is like a curse on this planet really but this whole idea of the global village is what allah subhanahu wa taala is over saying over here they wish that you should disbelieve as they have disbelieved and thus you become all alike nobody can tell the difference between aisha and fatima and aishwarya and angelina no difference no difference right then allah subhanahu wa taala says so do not take friends from among them unless they migrate in the way of allah right in that those particular at that particular time it was for the for the ones who had refused to migrate because remember it was for right in our time allah subhanahu wa taala has talked about it many times we have discussed it about who we should take as friends then uh, friends meaning close friends then, uh, then if they turn away seize them and kill them wherever you find them and do not take from among them a friend or a helper this was specifically for that time in those days when they had turned back as the believers plotting against the believers except those who join a group between whom uh whom and you there is a treaty or who come to you with their hearts feeling discomfort in fighting either against you or against their own people now those of them who are not going to be with the mushrikeen 100% so there was another group who are not living in makka but are in the outskirts or whatever yeah and they don't feel good about this they have perhaps done this out of hamia hamia meaning out of uh, uh, their loyalty to the uh, mushrikeen but in their heart they they are they're uncomfortable they don't really want to fight you so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying except those they are not the ones who are going to be your die hard enemies right this is the justice and mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala if allah had so willed he would have given them power over you then they would have fought you 
So if they stay away from you and do not fight you and offer you peace, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given you any authority against them. And this is the reply to the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about fighting aggression and oppression. Right? Fighting aggression and oppression, not just random violence. That is not what Deen of Islam talks about at all. You will find others who want to be secure from you and secure from their own people. But whenever they are called back to the mischief, they are plunged into it. So if they do not stay away from you and do not offer peace to you and do not restrain their hands, then you seize them and kill them wherever you find them. And we have given you an open authority against them. So for the oppressor and for the aggressor who are held bent on causing harm to you, causing harm to the deen of Islam, those are the ones that Rasulullah and the believers were said, they are the ones that you should be aggressive against. It is not for a believer to kill any believer except by mistake. Now, ayah number 92 is talking about the law and the commandments of deer, right, of blood money. Uh, except by <clears throat> mistake, whoever kills a believer by mistake, then a believing slave has to be freed and the blood money must be paid to the family unless they forego it. If the victim belongs to a people hostile to you and is a believer, then a believing slave has to be freed. If the victim belongs to a people between whom and you there is a treaty, then diet or blood money is to be paid to him, is to be paid to his family, and a believing slave is to be freed. Whoever does not find one has to fast for two consecutive months. This repentance is prescribed from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala wakan Allahu aliman hakima. So this is talking about that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that if there has been an accidental death, right? Unintentional manslaughter, right? Or I, I think there are other legal terms to it. I, uh, I don't know all the legal, ter legal terms to it. Then there is something which is called diyat that is going to be paid to the person who has been killed, right? And that is uh, and also freeing of a slave. Like in these days, it, it would be uh, uh, prisoners, right? Mm. Now, Hang on, just a minute. There were, yeah, okay. So this is, this could be like a road accident. This could be like, uh, I don't know, uh, any unintentional murder, unintentional manslaughter, I think it's called, right? So you will also see that wherever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the kafara or what you can do about it, about blood money or freeing a slave Allah also talks about whoever does not find one has there's always another option given whoever does not find one has to fast for two consecutive months Rasulullah has said that there will come a time yeah when the uh, no sorry that's not for here sorry yeah so this is talking about diet and this is something which is an injunction in our being and this is something which we must understand as being part of the Sharia, but this is not something which is forced upon someone, right? This is not something which is forced upon someone. Okay. Whoever kills a believer deliberately, yeah, this one, this one over here. Whoever kills a believer or whoever kills deliberately, his reward is Jahannam, where he shall remain forever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shall be angry with him and he has prepared for him a mighty punishment. So murder is something which is a great uh, crime in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unjustly killing somebody is a great crime. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that there will come a time when a murderer will not know why he is killing and a victim will not know why he is being killed. And we are witnessing that time, yeah? We are witnessing that time, this un, uh, you know, this crazy violence that we see all around us. Crazy violence, targeted killings, random killings, indiscriminate killings. That is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying his reward is Jahannam, where he shall remain forever. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, right? Help us in at least taking some steps towards a peaceful and just society. O oh, you who believe, Ya Ayyuhal Ladina Amanu. When you go out in the way of Allah, be careful and do not say to the one who offers you salam that you are not a, uh, not a believer. This is such an amazing ayah. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying over here, right? 
a specific reference to concept context that when you are going uh uh for the law for jihad for example in that time and somebody says salam to you right so don't say that they are uh, disbelievers right you are a disbeliever or uh, uh, to seek stuff of the worldly life so with allah there are spoils in abundance in the same state you were before then allah subhanahu wa taala favored you so be careful surely allah subhanahu wa taala is all aware of what you do so once what happened was that it was usama bin zaid radhiyallahu taala and he said that once rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had said this is in uh, sahih muslim uh, that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam had sent them on a battle right for a battle and there was this person when uh, usama found him radhiyallahu and he said la ilaha illallah right so it's quite possible that he said it to save his life but he said la ilaha illallah and yet usama radhiyallahu taala and killed him and when he came back right and he told this to rasulullah sallallahu uh, uh, to, to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said la ilaha illallah and you killed him and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kept, kept repeating it. till usama of the allah taala and said that i wish that today was the first day that i had become muslim yani meaning that when you actually accept islam your previous sins are deleted allah subhanahu wa taala is that merciful yeah so just because somebody says la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah that is enough because our maamala with people in this dunya is on the apparent what is in their hearts is between them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is between them and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right we have absolutely no right to say to anybody who is saying la ilaha illallah or who's offer salam to you right particularly saying la ilaha illallah oh no 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 actually he's not really yeah kafir kafir shia kafir 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 sunni kafir we have no right to do that he's a believer his mamla of the heart is with allah subhanahu wa taala so may allah subhanahu wa taala save us from being on this judgmental high horse that we are on constantly those among the believers who sit back except the handicap are not equal to those who fight in the way of allah with their riches and their lives allah subhanahu wa taala has raised the ranks of those who fight with their riches and their lives over those who just sit and to each allah has promised good allah subhanahu wa taala has given precedence to those who fight over those who sit in giving them a great reward now allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about the mujahid the mujahid is the one who does mujahada in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala right are the ones who are going to sit yeah are they going to be the same as those who actually pursue the aggressors yeah and fight against oppression and stand up for the truth and stand up for moral values and stand stand up for those who have been oppressed yeah they can never be the same and who fight with their riches and their lives right today we can fight with our tongue today we can fight with our mal today we can fight with ourselves can't we with ourselves in the, in, in the sense that be a role model for people who are finding it hard to practice islam perhaps yeah use the media use your skill use whatever power and authority allah subhanahu wa taala has given you to propagate this deen of islam to build bridges between the people whose hearts have become so sour and uh, uh, black against each other all of that is fighting for allah subhanahu wa taala and allah is clearly saying that the mujahid is not the same as the qaidi although allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that, uh, that the one who's sitting back is still a believer so allah has promised some good to him as well it's not that allah subhanahu wa taala is writing off their iman right but the one who is in the forefront the one who is putting their reputation and their life and everything that they have on the line they are the ones who allah subhanahu wa taala will raise their rank inshallah may allah subhanahu wa taala make us from among those what darajat min hu wa maghfiratan wa rahma high rank and forgiveness and mercy wa kana allah ghafuran rahim we are so outspoken we are so out there we are so articulate about everything under the sun except the sunnah except the commandments of allah 
and even from among the commandments and the sunna we pick and choose some things which are going to be socially acceptable and the other things we don't and allah is saying that the mujahid is the one who will be given forgiveness and high ranks and mercy of allah subhanahu wa taala pray to allah subhanahu wa taala right now oh allah make me a mujahid ki sabeelullah right oh allah make my children mujahid ki sabeelullah because we need your mercy and your forgiveness and we want those beautiful beautiful darajat where we can be with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam where we can sit with bibi aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala now imagine sitting with the sahaba and habia that are saying so so guys how was it back in the day just imagine that right those are the darajat that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is promising to you and me if we just get off our butt and do something inshallah then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those who souls the angels take while they have wronged themselves remember we did this ayat that we were talking about death right that what is going to happen when the soul of a disbeliever is going to be coming out one part of it is this while they had wronged themselves the angels say to them in what business were you involved in right we were oppressed in the way in the earth they would say yet why was it that you were not practicing is something you know for us to understand over here what was the matter right <clears throat> so they would say that we were oppressed on the earth they say uh, the angels will say to them was not the earth of allah wide enough for you to emigrate to it those people are such that their refuge is jahannam it is an evil place to return except the oppressed men and women and children who cannot have means to immigrate nor can they find a way so allah subhanahu wa taala is always talking about the ones who are truly oppressed and allah knows the one who is not truly oppressed and it is their own nafs because of which they don't leave their comfort zone and walk towards allah subhanahu wa taala because we have talked about this before that hijra migration is to leave something you know, your old way of life you know something that you were comfortable with and it's a difficult thing to do it's not an easy thing to do most certainly yeah definitely yes it takes a little bit of guts it takes a little bit of himmat it takes a little bit of uh, i think madness also kind of right kind of the positive kind just focus a little bit come what may allah subhanahu wa taala will catch you allah subhanahu wa taala will catch you you know there was this uh, incident of a mountaineer right he was um, he was uh, climbing somewhere and it became dark and uh, he was holding on to his rope and he was finding it very difficult because he couldn't see he heard a voice saying let go he heard a voice saying let go but he didn't let go because he was scared obviously and he froze to death on that mountain side and the next day when they found him he was just a few yards or something away from the uh, ground sometimes when allah subhanahu wa taala says let go of the dunya i will catch you trust in him trust in him make that migration in the sake of allah subhanahu wa taala walk in the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is no way that allah subhanahu wa taala will let go of you there is no way that's a promise and only allah's promise is uh, such only allah's promise is 100% true and allah is constantly talking about those people we are not talking about those people who are actually oppressed who are actually in such a position that they are unable to move from that situation allah is not talking about them at all as uh, for such it is likely for those people who are actually oppressed it is likely that allah would pardon them allah subhanahu wa taala is most forgiving and most pardoning afu wa ghafura right is most forgiving and most uh, 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 pardoning whoever does hijra in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala shall find on the earth many a place to settle and a wide dimension of resources whoever leaves his home right as a muhajir for the sake of allah and his messenger and death overtakes him then his reward is established with allah subhanahu wa taala and allah is most forgiving and very very merciful just like jihad fi sabeel allah mujahada whether it is with yourself whether it is against oppression is a condition of iman right ataat of rasul condition of iman commandments of allah subhanahu wa taala condition of iman one of them 
is this hijra one of them is this leaving that life behind the life of heedlessness the life of perhaps debauchery the life of whatever non sunna the life of uh not recognition of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's a different lifestyle right it's a completely different way of living it's different choices that you are making leave that and walk towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying once you do that perhaps initially it will be lonely we talked about that before as well initially it might be lonely but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will settle you right whether it is physical migration for example there might be such believers with such a high level of taqwa who in this dunya even today that there are certain places in the dunya where they feel that it's very very difficult to practice deen it is getting very increasingly more difficult and more oppressive so they physically move to a different place that's possible that's very much possible right and the one who is doing it you know uh, internally yeah? doing it internally like you and me perhaps yeah then allah subhanahu wa taala says that you take those steps right and is in that process even though you have not 100% applied the sharia on yourself and made 100% percent reached uh, nafsul mutmainna say for example and death comes to you and allah takes you then allah's reward is promised allah subhanahu wa taala's reward is a promise for you because allah subhanahu wa taala just wants to see whether you are actually going to take those few steps ahead right um and transfer of residence is very taxing and stressful it really is anaton francis is this thinker who had said all changes ever even if they are most longed for all changes even if they are most longed for have their own melancholy because what we leave behind is a part of ourselves right and this must die and we must die to one life before we enter into another we do leave a part of ourselves behind yeah but we must kill that self in order to walk towards allah subhanahu wa taala may allah subhanahu wa taala give us the strength and the himma and the taqwa and the tawfiq particularly ya rabbi when i start walking towards you hold my hand tight inshallah help me in this journey give me beautiful companions who would hold me right we thank you to allah give you beautiful companions and resources and that absolute certainty of the heart that this is the right thing to do and i am walking towards jannah al firdaus inshallah 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 when you travel on the earth there is no sin on you in shortening your salah now this verse is talking about qasr allah subhanahu wa taala's mercy on the believers that when you are traveling right no i'm sorry is this qasr hang on just a minute yeah this is qasr and this is salatul khauf okay if you fear that the disbelievers would put you in trouble surely the disbelievers are an open enemy for you let's read this and we'll talk about it when you o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam are in their midst and arrange for them the salah then a party from them should stand with you and should take their arms along then once they perform sajda they should move away from you and the other party uh, that is not yet perform salah should come and perform salah with you and should take their precautionary measures and their arms those who disbelieve would want you to become heedless to your arms and your belongings so that they may come down upon you in a single move there is no sin on you if you have some inconvenience due to rain or you are sick in putting your arms aside but take your precautionary measures surely allah subhanahu wa taala has prepared for the disbelievers a humiliating punishment once you have finished your salah then remember allah subhanahu wa taala while standing and sitting and reclining as soon as you are secure perform salah as due surely salah is an obligation is an obligation on the believers that is tied up with time okay so allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about two things over here one is that allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that when you are in actually a state of either war or or on the battlefield etc et so there is something which is called a salatul khauf right uh right um sala is so important that in whatever uh, whatever life situation you are in even if it is the battlefield you cannot leave it 
right? You cannot leave it. That is one thing. And the other thing is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, and which is general for traveling. If you are traveling, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this ruqsat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this uh, um, I'm on. I'm thinking, am I on the right aya or Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us that you can uh, shorten your salah, which is called qasr, right? Now, qasr is for the time when you are traveling. And travel is something which is a mental displacement, right? Where you have this feeling of displacement, right? So how do you shorten your salah, right? Uh, there are there are certain uh, there are different schools of thought about how many miles it should be when you are able to do qasr. I'm not going to go into that detail. The thing is that what you can do is that for fajr you do do uh, two for right for zuhr you do two for asr two for maghrib. So obviously you can't do one and a half. So uh, three for and for isha two for <clears throat> and some say even one with her. Okay, and you can also combine the salas together. Right, that, that you can combine the salahs together. So you can combine either Zohar and Asr at the time of Zohar or at the time of Asr, or you can combine Asr and Maghrib at the time of no, sorry, Maghrib and Aisha at the time of either Maghrib or Aisha. Right, these are legal rulings. Inshallah, I'll try to put it down in uh, 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 together and, and send it to you so that you don't get confused if anybody is confused of what I said. The idea is that you should be in a state of displacement. So, for example, uh, somebody living in the UK, you are traveling every day. You're work, you live in London and uh, you live in Guildford and you work in London, right? So, you say you're going to do Qasr. No. Although you, you are taking the fast train or the slow train or whatever into town, you will still be doing your normal regular salah because that is your routine. Right. So for a student who is traveling, you know, you go from one place to the other for whatever reason. Right. So when you're home in the summer holidays, you will not be doing Qasr throughout the summer. Mm -hmm. You will be doing Qasr while you are traveling. And when you go back, that means that is your temporary home at that time, your university or wherever you're living. So it's not as if you will be spending three, four years of your life doing Qasr. So let's be very clear about that as well. That Qasr is a uh, Ruqsat. Qasr is a blessing. Qasr is a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you that leverage, so you take it. Okay? Um, and the, 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 the importance of salah over here is that no matter what the situation you are in, whether it is off, whether it is uh, the battlefield, don't let go of your salah in any, any circumstances. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Salah is an obligation on the believers that is time bound, right? That is time bound. So the Fajr time is Fajr time, not 9 a.m. every morning. It's a time bound worship. And it's important that we keep track of the time. And you know, when we are trying to be Abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The first thing, and what scholars tell us about Salah is that stick to your Salah. Hang on to your Salah and everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place. Perhaps some of us are being very regular in Salah these days because of the blessings of Ramadan. So pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep you, if you don't keep consistency on anything, be consistent in your Salah. Start off with your fard if you feel that you can't manage anything, you know, or if you're not used to it, whatever. Stick to your Salah. Stick whoever you speak to, whether they are new Muslims or older Muslims, when Salah is in place, that is that connection, that is the communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then a lot of things get sorted out. Somebody has said something beautiful that initially you might have to force your, your heart to stand up for salah. Then there will come a time where your heart will take you to stand on the musalla, inshallah. And it is time bound, so be careful about that. Set your priorities according to the five salahs. You know, like uh, or people always tell you that experiment with the, you know, uh, Trainers always have this experiment that they have a jar and then you put five rocks in it, which are your priorities of the day. And then you put the, uh, the other uh, uh, little uh, pebbles and then you put a little bit of sand in it as well. 
right? So everything else should be worked up, uh, worked around your salah, inshallah ta'ala, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not show weakness in pursuing these people. If you are suffering, they are suffering as you are suffering. While you hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while they, what they do not hope, right? So in 104, uh, right, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was again talking about those munafiqun, right? Surely we have revealed to you the book with the truth so that you may judge between people according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has shown you, right? Do not be an advocate for those who breach trust. We talked about uh, uh, witnessing before as well. Allah is saying that judge between people with haq on the basis of this book. Don't use any other criteria of judgment, right? Because this is al furqan right? This is the book which judges on the basis of the truth. Seek for forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Surely Allah is all forgiving and very merciful. Do not argue on behalf of those who betray themselves. Surely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like anyone who is a sinful betrayer. Right? Um, they feel shy before people, but they do not feel shy before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is with them when they make plans at night to give a statement that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses whatever they do. This is again about the munafiqeen, that they are afraid of people and they are also shy of people. The shy meaning that they have this embarrassment. They're embarrassed of people, but they're not embarrassed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look, this is what you are. You have argued for them in the worldly life, but who shall argue for them with Allah on the day of judgment or who shall be their defender? Right? If you are taking sides of those who are blatantly against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who is going to take their side on the day of judgment? Whoever acts evil or wrongs himself. Again, the mercy. You will see Allah talks about punishment. Allah talks about, you know, they are being terrible. That's a horrible thing that you are doing. And constantly he brings his mercy. Whoever acts evil or wrongs himself, then seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He shall find Allah rafur or rahima. He shall find Allah most forgiving and most merciful. Whoever commits a sin, commits it only against himself. Right? Every time we transgress, every time we break commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are we? Are we harming other than our own selves? Right? Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-knowing and all-wise. And we've already talked about the conditions of tawbah. We've already talked about the power of tawbah. And we've already talked about that astaghfar is so important. That astaghfar is not only for your sins, but astaghfar is also for the shortcomings of all of the deeds that we do. That, that is something we must hold on firmly to. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about himself that I make astaghfar a hundred times. And by a hundred, he meant a lot of times. Whoever commits a vice or a sin, then shifts its blame to an innocent person. He indeed uh, takes the burden of a false imputation and a glaring sin. Yani, if you are going to put the blame of anything that you have done on somebody else, this is the justice of, justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Perhaps you will go spot free in this dunya, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling it an ithmam mubina, right? Even as tarbiyah of our children, we should never ever encourage, yeah, or we should never ever be just fine with children saying, no, I didn't do it and he did it or she did it. That's a terrible thing. We want to discourage that. Take, uh, you, you, we do that or people, I mean, criminals do that at all different levels, putting the blame on somebody else, right? He did that, putting the blame on somebody else. Must understand the psyche of such a person, right? Self-preservation, thinking that Allah is not watching me thinking that I'm just, I'm just going to get away with it. No, you're not going to get away with it. Own up, right? Fess up. Make your tawbah. Right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it is a terrible crime, terrible crime to uh, incarcerate somebody who's innocent. A lot of times in cases of, say, sexual harassment, right? A lot of times in cases of sexual misconduct. What do people say sometimes? The perpetrators, right? Oh, she was coming on to me for example, right? She was asking for it. it. She didn't really mean no. 
what are you doing you are blaming an innocent person allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that is a glaring crime it's mamnubina if the grace of allah and his mercy had not been with you a group from <coughs> them had resolved to mislead you while they mislead you. <coughs> while they mislead none where was i uh while they mislead none but themselves and they uh, and they can do you no harm allah subhanahu wa taala has revealed to you the book and the wisdom and has taught you what, what you did not know the grace of allah subhanahu wa taala on you has always been great wakana has always been great so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is specifically addressing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi uh, uh, sorry allah subhanahu wa taala is specifically addressing rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam over here um that he has kept him uh shielded from the shar and the uh, and the schemings of the munafiqun right although they have left absolutely nothing unturned to do harm to the prophet and the believers there is no good in most of their whisperings over here allah subhanahu wa taala is again talking about whispering right unless one bids charity or a fair action or reconciliation between people the one who does this to seek allah's pleasure we shall give him a great reward right allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about this that when mm, there is this word najwa over here la khaira fi kathir min najwa 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 is like you know going doing kus 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 pus pus behind the back of authorities right uh, it can be specific for an organization that something has happened right and uh, whether it's an institution something has happened right and instead of going to the authorities who have the uh, uh, who have the power to do something about it to change something whether it's talking about corruption whether it's talking about any any issue which is bothering a group of people right you start instead of going to the management you start and you don't have the moral courage to do that basically to go to the authorities and you start this whispering campaign go through the proper channel is what allah subhanahu wa taala is saying right unless and unless you're talking about uh something good something which will bring reconciliation between people that is something that you can do najwa for so for example there are a couple of friends who are now uh, upset with each other so other friends get together and kind of form a little plan not an evil scheme but a little plan how can we get these guys together so that would not be najwa right that would not be najwa but allah is saying these behind the back whispering are something which is now which are not a good thing that so that shows a uh, a uh, moral cowardice yeah moral cowardice whoever breaks away with the messenger after the right path has become clear to him and follows what is no way is not the way of the believers we shall let him have what he chose and we shall admit him to jahannam which is an evil place to return allahumma ajini min annar surely allah subhanahu wa taala does not forgive that a partner is ascribed to him and forgives anything short of a uh, short of that for whomsoever he wills whoever ascribes a partner to allah subhanahu wa taala has indeed gone far astray yani the the dalala the dalalam ba'ida far away from allah subhanahu wa taala's right path they uh, they invoke none uh, besides him but feminine objects and they invoke none but shaitan the rebel you know uh, we talked about it i think before that the mushrikeen of makka used to say that the angels are the daughters of allah subhanahu wa taala so allah subhanahu wa taala is saying that you know sometimes they invoke other beings uh as being from allah subhanahu wa taala that doesn't mean that allah is saying that being feminine is a problem what allah is saying that ascribing any partner to him whether masculine or feminine or whatever is a big big problem uh none but shaitan the rebel whom allah subhanahu wa taala has cursed he said surely i will take an appointed share from your slaves now this is a conversation between shaitan and allah subhanahu wa taala where shaitan is making this promise shaitan is pledging to allah subhanahu wa taala right surely i will definitely take a portion from your slaves and what else is he saying in ayah number 119 right and i will lead them astray and i will tempt them with false hopes 
and I will command them where that, whereby they shall split the ears of cattle, and I will command them whereby they shall alter the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right? Whoever takes Shaitan for a friend instead of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala incurs an obvious loss. Right? Faqad the khastira khusra nam mubina. So what is Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala saying over here? That what the pagans used to say, there was a custom, you know, splitting of the ears over here, right? So f- first of all, the shaitan is saying that I'm going to lead them astray. That is what he does. That's what he's there for. And he has whole themes and uh, whatever for, for that. So what the pagans used to say was there was a custom that where used to dedicate animals to their idols and they used to slit their ears as a mark of dedication, which is Allah for talking about the alteration in the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right, they would disfigure. It includes what they uh, what they did with the animals as a token of dedication. And uh, according to uh, authentic ahadis, this changing the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is applicable for us as well. In our bodies, right? This is talking about cosmetic surgeries, not. Reconstruction surgery. There is a difference between reconstruction surgery and cosmetic surgery. This is also talking about hair transplants, right? Hair transplants. This is also talking about this. These things are included, right? Um, cosmetic surgery is what you are changing. You don't like what Allah Subhanahu. You don't like the nose that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave you, so you want to get a nose job done. Yeah. You know, there are all the the bar of cosmetic surgery also has gone so high now. And we don't even think that there is anything wrong in that, right? Why? Please go back to that discussion because it is my body, so I can do whatever I want. No, it is not your body, and you cannot do whatever you want. Have that very clear. Reconstruction surgery, right? Having limbs, you know, if somebody is uh, 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 because of a landmine, etc. If somebody's arm or a leg is broken off, and there's reconstruction surgery, that does not fall into. Uh, Or somebody has been in an accident, or whatever reason, where there's, or somebody has had breast cancer and they are doing reconstruction surgery. That's a completely different thing. Altering the creation of Allah is for the sake of vanity. That is, why else would you want a nose job, or I don't know, uh, whatever jobs do you guys get done? I don't know. Not you guys. I mean, like people get done. Uh, Allah, Allah, whatever kind of cosmetic surgery that you breast implants and God knows what not, right? And scholars also say that changing the shape of your eyebrows would fall into that, right? So leave it alone. Now, if your eyebrows are kind of really, you know, are resembling that of a man, for example, are very bushy and they are meeting in the middle, so scholars give the uh, leverage that you can remove those those extra hair, which makes you look like a man, right? And this does the and this does not include the upper lip hair. Because again, there is mushabeha of a man in that. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is saying that whoever uh, takes shaitan for a friend instead of Allah, he incurs a khusranam mubina. Shaitan makes promises to them and he tempts them with hope. So shaitan is going to tell you. So if you do this uh, cosmetic surgery or if you go under the knife for this reason, then you are going to be so popular. Then you are going to be the Uh, uh, the you are going to have the most likes or the most subscribers to your videos or whatever, and he tempts them with hopes, yeah. But his promise is nothing but deception, right? Yari to whom was Shaytan who illa gurura, illa gurura, right? For temporary fix, don't fall into this trap of just worried about enlightening and God knows what not. There's no end to it. There is no end to it, and even if it is not physically harmful, for example, this is something which is a great kufr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, isn't it? It is being absolutely the opposite of sugar. That you are not happy with the creation of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, so you are going to change it. Then Shaitan is going to really egg you on to do that, right? As for such people, their refuge is Jahannam. Allahumma ajibni min al nar. And they shall find no escape from it. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala save us from that. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala save us from the vanity because of which we do all of these things, right? It's pure, sheer vanity. It's all just thinking about yourself only, and that's it. Just focus on your body. Just focus on the outside. <coughs> What's going to happen? How long is this body going to stay the way it is? 
no matter how much no matter how many surgeries or implants or whatever a uh, 50 60 year old tries to do on herself she will still never be 20 and she will not even look like a 20 year old mind you right sometimes you look ridiculous when you are that old and you are trying to pretend to be i don't know we have this obsession of looking younger or for whatever reason it's not going to work those who believe and do good deeds allah mara bana jahanna minhum we shall admit them to the gardens beneath which rivers flow they shall live there forever it being a real promise from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and allah is saying it again woman astaqu min allah yaqila and who is more truthful than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his word no one ya rabbi this is not a matter of your fancies or the fancies of the people of the book whoever does evil shall be requited for it and he shall find neither a friend for himself besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nor a helper whoever male or female again this verse is coming where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening up the way to jannah opening up sirat al mustaqim opening up the field of spirituality and worship and guidance and taqwa and being a good person for men and women on an equal footing completely whoever male or female does good deeds and is a believer then such people shall enter paradise simple as that and they shall not be wronged in the least right so over here allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about absolute complete gender equality in the field of what walking towards him in the field of salihat amalun salihat righteous deed whether it is a man whether it is a woman right equal reward equal opportunity so allah subhanahu wa taala as our master is an equal opportunity boss right really equal opportunity employer that's who our allah subhanahu wa taala is who is better in faith then one who has surrendered himself to allah subhanahu wa taala and is good in deed and has followed the creed of ibrahim alayhi salam the upright right such an amazing ayah wa man ahsanu deena mimman aslama wajhahu allah wa huwa muhsin wattaba'a millata ibrahim hanifa wattakhadha allah ibrahim khalila and allah subhanahu wa taala has made ibrahim alayhi salam his closest and most intimate friend the khalil so who is better in faith whose deen is better than the one who has completely surrendered to allah subhanahu wa taala and that is something which you and i are trying to do right may allah subhanahu wa taala make us from among those and may allah subhanahu wa taala keep us absolutely uh steadfast on the millat of ibrahim alayhi salam on the sunnah of rasul allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and may allah subhanahu wa taala be our friend may allah subhanahu wa taala be our helper to allah belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth allah subhanahu wa taala encompasses everything they ask you about women say allah subhanahu wa taala answers you about them and so does uh, what is recited in uh, to you from the book um often uh, Sorry, where am I? And so does what is recited to you from the book regarding orphan women who do not uh, give what is prescribed, whom you do not give what is prescribed for them, and tend to marry them. And regarding the weak from the children, and that you should maintain justice for the orphans, whatever good you do, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is all aware of it, and we have already discussed this. If a woman fears ill treatment or aversion from her husband, then there is no sin on them in entering into a compromise between them. Compromise is better. avarice is made to be present in human souls if you do good and fear allah subhanahu wa taala then allah subhanahu wa taala is aware all aware of what you do right so allah subhanahu wa taala over here is talking about the nushuz of the husband first we talked about the nushuz of the of the woman allah subhanahu wa taala is talking about the nushuz of the husband then what can she do she can either have this compromise right like we talked about before where allah was talking about the nushuz of the woman or she has this uh, uh uh she has this option of taking khula from him and allah just like he had said before that work towards ironing out your differences if possible right 
over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying compromise is better if you feel that that can be done in a proper manner without getting egos and uh, uh, different uh, negativity get in the way. You shall never be able to maintain real equality between wives, even though you are eager to. So do not lean to, totally towards one and leave the other as suspended. Then Allah is saying that clearly, right? Allah is saying that clearly. If you act righteously and fearfully uh, and fear Allah, have taqwa of Allah, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most forgiving and very merciful. And Alhamdulillah, we have talked about this before, right? Okay. Um, if they separate, Allah shall through his capacity make each of them need free of each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all embracing and all wise. Right? If all of the uh, uh, arbitration or uh, conflict resolution uh, ways, uh, maybe marriage counseling, etc., doesn't work, and they do separate, hmm? and divorce happens or khula happens, right? Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is consoling both of them, right? That through His, because if you have gone through that process with taqwa, right? If you have gone through the process with the way Allah wanted you to, have gone through that separation process then Allah will make each of you ghani of each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you need free of each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will take care of you. And this is particularly for the women. Sometimes if you feel that the oppression is so much, so much that it's, you can hardly bear it and it is having such great physical and mental and psychological effects on you and you are just scared to get out of a toxic situation because now what's going to happen? So Allah is subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, through his capacity, make each of them need free of each other. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is embracing in all wise. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. We have ordered those who were given the book before you and ordered you yourself to fear Allah. If you would disbelieve, then surely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all independent and ever praised. Now Allah is repeating this over and over again. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَكَفَى بِاللَّهِ وَكِيلًا To Allah belongs what is in the heavens and what is in the earth and Allah is enough to trust Him. This is for the believing woman and also for the believing man. If you are walking the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are uh, doing conflict resolution in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you are separating because there is no way out you feel, then please remember, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the master and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best to trust in. If he so wills, he can remove you, O men, and bring others in your place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to do that. Whoever seeks the reward of this world, right? And what does this mean over here? That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants, he can replace this ummah, right? Who's being so ungrateful and bring another ummah, bring another people, uh, uh, in place of them. So this is translated as men, but it, it means a yuhannas, people, or people who have become so ungrateful and have gone so astray. If Allah wants, he can do that. Whoever seeks the reward of this world, then with Allah is the reward of this world and of the hereafter. Allah is all seeing and all, uh, all hearing and all seeing. This means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is motivating us that for, with Allah, there is the reward of both the worlds. So don't just focus on the dunya, but be more avid and be more yearning for the hereafter. Oh, you who believe, be upholders of justice, witnesses for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though against the interest of yourself or the parents and the kinsmen, one may be rich or poor. Allah is better taker, caretaker of both. So do not desire, uh, do not follow desires lest you should swerve. If you twist or avoid the evidence, then what is going to happen? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all aware of what you do. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kunu qawwameena bil qist. Right? Stand for justice. Stand for justice. We talked about this yesterday as well. Be upholders of justice. Even if it is against your closest people. Even if it is your own walidain. Even if it is your own children. Even if it is your own relatives. Your job. Your responsibility is justice, is to stand for justice, be on the side of justice, right? And a lot of times what happens is one may be rich or poor, unless, you know, sometimes rich people get away with a lot. They can buy witnesses, right? 
or you lean towards them allah is saying it doesn't matter the 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 thing, for a believer the utmost important thing is kunu qawwamin bil qist stand for justice don't be in, lean towards or support the unjust or the oppressor very important lesson for us we've gone above time and uh, i i will tell you from now on that to speed up i, I wanted to finish all of it but though it will take time we will go a little above time inshallah try to uh, uh, because otherwise we won't be able to move forward and inshallah let's see how much we can cover later on subhana rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifun wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillah rabbil alamin allahumma rabbana ja'alna minhum alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين يا غفور الرحيم يا ارحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والاكرام السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته